Being a short climber is sometimes frustrating, especially when you simply don't have enough reach for the next hold. However, the reach can be covered by the right technique and training. In this video, I'm going to talk about four important tips that can significantly help short climbers and how each technique can be improved based on our experience. everyone, we're Sahana and Akane climbing together in Indianapolis in the United States. We are both relatively short. I am 5'1 or 155 cm and Sahana is 5'6 or 170 cm. And our height is lower than the average for women and men in the US respectively. In the past, when we started climbing, I was often blaming my height for not being able to do the same moves as other climbers at average height. But now, I have come to peace with my height because first of all, I climb for myself and I no longer compare myself with others. Secondly, and more related to the topic of this video, I improved my strength, power, and technique through a series of training and I can actually cover my height much better now. Sahan feels the same way. He is taller than me, but shorter than the average male climber. Some moves are reachy for him, especially high-grade bouldering problems, but his strength and power greatly help with that. In this video, we introduce four tips that we found helpful as a short climber. Flexibility, lock of strength, technique, and dynamic moves. I will talk about how each item can help cover the reach and how to improve it based on our experience. Flexibility greatly helps you with creative moves and your technique. I will talk about specific techniques in the third item, but as a short climber, you need to be creative in your footwork. Sometimes your foot comes as high as your hands and your body needs to be squeezed into the wall when the intended beta is too reachy. Flexibility enables those crazy splits and squeezy moves, which helps you overcome your problem as a short climber. I didn't struggle with flexibility too much because I was already flexible to some extent when I started climbing. I did track and field in high school and I have kept the same flexibility since then through daily stretches. However, Sahant wasn't like that and he has been working on his flexibility on a regular basis since we started climbing. When it comes to flexibility, there is no magic that makes you suddenly flexible. You just need to work on it little by little every day. Sahan and I work on our flexibility on our non-climbing days, but we do stretches when we warm up and cool down, so we technically work on flexibility pretty much every single day. Our previous video shows our warm up, cool down, and recovery routine. Check it out if you're interested, but for flexibility, one of the main things we do is split. Make sure you're warmed up to perform a split, as it is one of the most demanding exercises. If you're not used to performing split, go little by little every day. You don't have to try to push too hard. You will get there in a few months or years. It requires patience, but just try to enjoy the feeling there. If capable, bend forward to stretch your hamstrings too. Don't round your back, but rather try to keep your back slightly hollowed. The aim here is to go forward, not down. I can't do a total flat bend yet, but the goal here is the flexibility for climbing, so I would call it good enough. Similarly, work on side split as well. Once you have good flexibility in these splits, you should feel comfortable using footholds far apart or way up high. This opens up more possibilities in your footwork. Now when your footwork range is increased, it is important to work on your hamstring and quadricep flexibility as well. It is great to be able to reach the footholds that are far apart or above your hands, but next you need to get on it. That requires some hamstring and quadricep movement movements, especially when you're heel hooking. Hamstrings can be stretched by bending or using chairs or something similar. For quadriceps, you can do a simple standing quad stretch or my favorite is what Futaba Ito was introducing in her Instagram live. Start from a lunge position and get your body weight on the front toe. Now grab the other foot and bring it as close to you as possible. For an advanced stretch, you can kneel on the ground and lean back as much as possible. Lock off probably changed my climbing the most because I didn't have enough upper body strength when I started climbing. 
Lock off is the ability to hold in a pulling place, and specifically for climbing, one arm is locked while the other hand is moving to the next hold. This simple move is surprisingly difficult for beginners, especially for women who do not have enough shoulder and arm strength. And I was the same. My climbing was messier before and not controlled at all. But now, with improved lock-off strength, my climbing is much more controlled and static than before. With lock-off, you can avoid unnecessary dynamic moves and maximize your reach comfortably. We will show you three steps to improve your lock-off strength based on your level. If you're introductory to lock-off, you can train this on a bordering wall, spray wall, or a big rank campus board. Pick a big jug that you can comfortably hang with two hands. Find good footholds for your feet. Then pull, release and raise your one arm while another hand is still holding and locking off the jug. Keep that position for 3 seconds and come down to the initial position. Repeat the same with the other hand. It is effective in overhang walls, but you can adjust the steepness based on how difficult it feels. I did this exercise when I was still a B4 climber. I remember it was hard, but now I am confident with this exercise. When comfortable with this exercise, you can move to a more advanced one. You will come up to a pulling position, move one hand to the assisted rope or bend, and stay there for 5 to 10 seconds depending on your capability. I started with the rope because it's not elastic, and after a while, I switched to a resistant bend. I am doing this exercise now, and holding for 10 seconds is becoming easier. Therefore, I am practicing holding at the 90 degree angle for 5 seconds now. More advanced exercises would be to do the same thing without the assistance of rope or elastic bands, which is what Sehan does. He comes to the pulling position with a one arm pull up stays there for 5 seconds, another 5 seconds at the 90 degree position, and then come down. He worked very hard to get to this level. If you can do this, I'm pretty sure you're already benefiting from lock-off. For short climber, having good technique is critical. Many people probably know Kim Jang, the South Korean female climber who is even shorter than me. But her technique makes her one of the most recognized climbers in IFSC competitions. Of course, she has outstanding strength and endurance too, but on top of that, she is known for her perfect technique. There is so much to talk about climbing techniques, but here I am focusing on three things that are basic yet critical for short climbers. High feet, drop knee, and heel hook. High feet are my favorite and probably the easiest thing to do. If you feel the footholds are placed too low or far, consider using the higher ones. It is easier to squeeze our bodies in a smaller space and alternative footholds greatly help you. Sometimes high feet require flexibility and lock-off which go back to the first and second items. Although on some rare occasions high feet are in a, such an awkward position and don't work, most of the time it should help and as a short climber, you should be actively looking for higher footholds. Drop knee is a foot technique that brings you stability and power and it also increases the distance of your reach. When you drop knee, you rotate your hip toward the wall and lower your knee. Your hand on the same side will reach to the next hold with higher stability and reach. I use drop knee a lot on moonboard. For example, let's look at the final desperation V5. The next move is to reach this black hold with my right hand, which looks quite far at first look. I struggled with this move for a while, but with the drop knee, my body felt locked, and I could magically reach and hold there. Another example is this V6 long black hair. The last move required pulling on a pinch, which is not the best, but the drop knee made this move surprisingly easy because I was in a stable position. If you watch professional climbers, they use more intensive drop knee that require good flexibility in the hip and knee joint. So here comes flexibility again. Flexibility helps in so many ways. This in turn means that you shouldn't try to make an intensive drop knee if you're not comfortable with your flexibility in the hip and knee joint. Drop knee is an easy looking technique, but it is actually one of the advanced techniques and I am still learning too. If incorrectly employed, it can result in injury. It is good to learn and try little by little. Finally, using a heel hook can help you in many cracks. Heel hook is one of the most basic climbing techniques, but you can't underestimate it. 
When I say strong, short female climbers, most of them are very good at heel hook, especially in bouldering. They heel hook on a tiny edge, and how they establish from that heel hook position is impressive. Heel hook keeps your hip close to the wall, which almost acts like a third arm. Especially when you do high feet, using your toe or heel makes a huge difference. When you high feet with your toe, your hip moves far from the wall, especially if your hip flexibility is limited. Consequently, you need to pull hard with your two arms to get on your toe. However, with a heel hook, your hip remains close to the wall, and by simply getting on your heel, you can move to the next hold easily. In this case, your hamstring pulls your body for you, not your two arms, so it saves energy. So, high feet with heel hook is probably the magic recipe for short climbers. I am still far from being a heel hook expert, partially because I haven't been able to find the right shoes that perfectly fit my heel. But I am actively learning and experiencing. I am excited to become one of those strong short climbers with insane techniques in the future. What I've talked about so far is to maximize your reach statically. However, dynamic moves like dyno and coordination are becoming increasingly popular where short climbers have the most obvious disadvantage. Dynamic moves also come with technique, which you can find so many helpful resources online. But in addition to the right techniques, it requires leg strength to execute the jump. Especially as short climbers, we need to jump longer distances than tall climbers to do the same dyno. For that, it doesn't hurt to strengthen your legs, especially for jumps. Squat jump, box jump, and pistol squats are all focus training to strengthen your lower body. I did intensive training like this as a high school student, and thanks to that, I am relatively good at dynamic moves for my height. In this video, I talked about 4 tips that help short climbers. Flexibility, lock-off, technique, and dynamic moves. They come from our experience as short climbers, and they help you with more stable, controlled climbing while maximizing your reach, except for the last item, which is very specific to the modern dynamic style. I hope you find them helpful, and if so, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel.